Hello everyone, this is Kron from The Great Work, and what this is, is a casted model of someone's actual skull, and I want to use this to bring attention to a bone, actually the bone, I think, that we have been chronically neglecting in this community and in this discussion. You know, there's a lot of talk about the maxilla and, of course, the jawbone, because they're, go goes this way, uh, they're the most obvious, they, they form up the face and you got the zygos up here. This is talking about the house. The house is built on a foundation. This is the sphenoid. This is the foundation of the skull. Combined here with the occiput, this is the cranial base. Everything else is pretty much built off of this and hanging from this. You can see the sphenoid in here and in here. And let me, let me tell you why it's almost silly for us to continue the discussion about these two bones without moving our discussion immediately to the sphenoid. You can see it now visually. And you know what? I wish I had gotten one that was multicolored so you can more easily see the differences between the bone surfaces. I will go online by the time this video is posted and I'll get you some pictures that are colorful so that you can clearly see the demarcations of what I'm talking about here. But how are you going to expand the maxilla when the sphenoid comes up over you see, you see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? You only got this much, you got a tiny little amount of space here. How is the maxilla going to expand and move forward unless you're doing some correction here to the sphenoid bone? On top of that, even more so, the mandible. This is always terrible. I apologize for that, especially if that was loud. Are you seeing? Are you seeing the connection here? Hopefully, I can get even uh, get you an even better view uh, using some sort of digital product. But how could you expect the mandible to be expanding and growing without the sphenoid expanding? Something else that I didn't uh, even get a chance to mention, which is quite obvious, is expanding the palate. This is the palatine bones right here. And they're pretty much hanging off the sphenoid and directly, you know, integrated and joined into the sphenoid. So how are you going to properly really expand the palate when the palatine bones are locked in like a puzzle to the sphenoid bone? This whole area needs adjustment in order to expand the maxilla and the palate. So you have the os, and this is also such an important bone. You see, you got, this is your airway right here. You got your nasal airway, your conche, and this is this portion here is your airway and it's also important because you have the cella turcica which is where your pituitary gland sits which is like a major hormonal gland so the type of growth factor that needs to come out to encourage bone growth and body growth in general and all sorts of other hormones that's sitting right about up here and as well as uh you know we talked about eyesight issues uh that come from improper development of this craniofacial area well, this is where those nerves are passing through. They're passing through the sphenoid. Almost all of it is coming through the sphenoid. And look how many different bones this touches. It's touching the frontals, touching the zygos, touching the parietals, it's touching the other major bone down here, the occiput. And there's a certain silliness to it, you know, to look at this, which by volume compared to this, which is the entire base upon which the front of it grows. Let me, let me try to take some of this apart here so you can see more what I'm talking about. So I've taken the zygomatic bones off and here you got your cranial or your nasal maxillary complex is what we would call this. And if we pop this off, you see it's pretty much all hanging off of this. This is the cranial base. And this is that moid, which, you know, for my purposes, I'm going to consider this a continuation of this uh, occiput sphenoid ethmoid into the frontal actually the, this ethmoid is this correction right there this is the ethmoid and this is the frontal are you seeing this you got your spine let's get that focus you got your spine your sphenoid and then this is the frontal your face is hanging off of this so trying to grow this without you know fixing the foundations i think it's the foundations that we really need to be looking at and uh you know here's a front view of what your skull would look like opened up and if you have excuse me you got your zygos over here 
how are you going to get the zygos in this entire frontal area expanding without any of this catching up that's why you know we i i, I think it's we need to have a much harder look at what's going on back here do you see here how the bones they overlap as well the sphenoid here this is your temple region by the way you can feel this if you if you put your finger up to the side of your head uh, this is the area that you really don't want to get hit because it'll mess you up uh, you see how the bones overlap it's, it's you're not it's not like you have some dome in your head this is very much a living breathing moving uh part of your body and as you can see here, because this isn't, you know, just a fake model, this is actually the model of someone who passed away and they happened to have a skull. And this is what it looks like. You can see that it's not a smooth junction and everyone's sutures are going to vary too, by the way, depending on your growth. But you see how this stuff can overlap and taking this apart, right here is the cella turcica. So that's where that pituitary gland that I was talking about is. And under this runs your uh, nasal passageways. And right here is basically the top of your airway. So you see how important this is to the breathing as well? So when we talk about the fact that, you know, the maxilla is too small to accommodate in a lot of people proper nasal breathing. Or, you know, they could have issues with uh, tonsils or adenoids or allergies or something that uh, causes them to tilt back their head in order to open the airway. Well... The airway also includes uh, this core portion of the bone. In fact, most of the airway, the, the biggest part of where the real start of the airway is, is back here, closer to the center, closer to the center line, closer to the spine. And um, we talk so much about head posture. You can see here, this is the attachments from how your neck your neck muscles are keeping attached to the spine here. So if we're talking about head posture, you're directly talking about the occiput, how it sits on the spine. And if you're talking how the occiput sits on the spine, that directly intermingles with the SBJ joint here, sphenobasilar joint, which is directly going to impact your sphenoid. And as we've seen, the sphenoid, all of these other bones are sitting and co-mingling with it. So the way that this, this junction here and this, this cranial base is functioning that i think is going to determine the rest of the structure of the skull so this this may not have been news for many of you but for some of you it may have been i really just wanted to highlight the fact that this sphenoid bone and the cranial base is going to be a huge portion of the videos and explanations going forward you know so if you see like oh how come we're not talk we're going to talk about the maxilla and the jaw and everything as well but if you're like, no, I'm only interested in expanding my maxilla or expanding my jaw and correcting those issues, why are we talking about the sphenoid and the skull and the spine and the cranial base so much? That's the reason why. Um, and I will apologize to you, the viewer, for the quality of this video as well. I have not done a live video before, so a little bit unscripted and a little bit hard to use my hands and talk at the same time. And here's just a little preview of what we got coming forward. Uh, this is Buddy's skull down here, and this is mine, actually. This is a cast. It's a couple years old of what my palette looks like, and you can see that crookedness. Look at that. That's disgusting. Um, and I've got scans as well, and we'll be going through the scans. Uh, I've got a Structa rectifier appliance here as well. We, I've got a bunch of, bunch of goodies. A lot of stuff I've saved up over the years that hopefully... We'll have videos about, and you know what? This is this is my proof. This is my evidence. I I won't be telling people. I won't be showing you pictures saying like, "Hey, this is how my face was," or "This is how my skull was." I've got the records. I've got the proof. I've got the scans, and any any personal progress of mine that I show in a video is gonna be empirical. It's gonna be backed up by evidence. So I hope you understand the importance of the sphenoid this isn't everything i have to say about it we're going to go much further much deeper into this topic and these sort of topics um please like and subscribe and comment and, and leave me suggestions please as well thank you